Hi everybody, this is Kay, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how I made this little mini album right here. Uh, this mini album was posted on the uh, Authentique blog uh, some weeks ago, and I promised everybody that I would do a tutorial, so that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Uh, to make this mini album, I used the Beginnings Collection by Authentique, and today I'm going to be using the Bewitched Collection. Uh, so... I'm going to do a Halloween themed little mini album today and I love Halloween, love, love Halloween. I dare to say that I love Halloween more than Christmas, but that's just me. So let me walk you through this little mini album. So basically it's a really tiny one. It measures about four and a quarter by two and three quarters roughly. And it's held together with a little belly band, so this comes off. And then the pages are actually uh, paper bags. And you can flip through the album this way, okay, like a, like a book. And inside each paper bag, there's a tag, and I left these blank. So they're strictly for pictures and or journaling. And the other cute thing about this mini album is that in the back, I've put two magnets here and here that actually keep the album together so you can flip through it like a book. Or if you want to, you can open it up, grab this little flap right here and pull it out. And then you have a mini album that sort of looks like this. It's like a cascading mini album. There you go, so you can see it all fits into the frame. And then you can, you know, look at it this way and pull out the pictures this way. So it, it's a little versatile. It's just a little, little addition that I wanted to do. I didn't want it to be strictly just a, like a flip. I also wanted it to pull out because it just, I don't know, it just looks kind of cool. <laughs> That's really the only reason why I added that, um, that addition to the end. Now, do you have to do that? Um, you don't have to. I mean, if you really want to, you could just adhere this flap to the, the, the back and, you know, leave it as a book. It'll just be like this, you know, and then you don't, you won't have that option to pull it out. But for today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I did it this way with the option to pull out. So let's get started. So I already pre-cut everything. I have everything prepared. So like I said, I used uh, mini bags for this, and these are the bags that I used for this, all right? It's uh, these little mini bags by Canvas Corp, and other manufacturers, manufacturers sell them, so you don't necessarily have to buy them by Canvas Corp. These are just the ones that I had in my stash. But basically, the size of the finished bags are about two and a half by four inches, all right? now. They can be any size, you know, this, this, uh, the creation of this uh, mini album is pretty versatile. So you don't have to use these size bags. And today is going to be a prime example because I am basically all out of these little mini bags and I haven't gotten a chance to go to the craft store and buy some more. So what I do have in my stash though, is this die. And that's what I'm going to be using today. So this is a Sizzix die and it creates pretty much the same little type of bag. All right, so this is called the, let me see, it's by Sizzix, it's a big die. Uh, looks like Jelly Bean Soup came up with this one. Um, and it's called the Pocket with Scallop Edge. That's what that's called, Pocket with Scallop Edge. And um, what's great about this is that it's a big die. So you can cut this out of thicker cardstock, uh, chipboard you could use it for anything so I really like this die and this is what I'm going to use today to make this uh, Halloween mini album so the measurements of this though are slightly different from these but it doesn't matter you just adjust your measurements and then you can still create your mini album so um, I've already cut out the pockets from the bewitched collection as you can see here and I just left one undone so I'm just going to finish putting this together. But what you need are six bags. Okay, so that's what you're going to start. That's the base of your, your, these are the pages of your mini album, six bags. So, 
And these guys measure two and a half by a, almost four and a half high. So these are actually a little, th like about an eighth of an inch thinner and about almost half an inch uh, taller than these bags. Okay, but you could still fit definitely uh, a wallet size picture. Here's a wallet size picture. The only, you could definitely fit them this way, all right? The only thing is you would have to crop about an eighth of, it, of an inch uh, uh, this way. <laughs> I don't even know how to call that. Crop an eighth of an inch so they could fit in because um, your typical wallet size picture is two and a half by three and a half and the bag is exactly exactly two and a half inches wide so it's not going to fit. It's going to be a very tight squeeze. So you would have to crop about half an inch and that's if you just want to store pictures in here all right if you want to do the option that i did over here which is to create little tags to go in it and then you know adhere the pictures to the tag so you can pull them out then you would have to crop them probably a little bit more so they can fit on the tag all right so choice is yours so let's get started here so here i go i got six bags already um cut out with the die and I'm gonna finish putting this one together. And there you go. So your six pages are done. So let's put that aside. And let's get going with the actual binding of the mini album. So I think I mentioned in the blog post that I'm always looking for really quick easy simple projects because I simply have no time in my hands um, I just never have time so I wish I had the time to create these really big complex fancy mini albums with pull outs and flip flops and flip flaps and whatever <laughs> all these other things that <laughs> mini albums have nowadays but I just don't have time I love them I just don't have time so this mini album I literally I could do like in an hour hour and a half tops so for the binding it's as easy as this this is the binding the binding should be 12 inches long by this particular binding is and where's my notes uh this binding is two and six sixteenths by 12 inches now where did i get the two six sixteenths from here's your rule of thumb whatever you're using for your pages basically cut the binding a sixteenth of an inch shorter so since these are two and a half wide I made the binding to be a sixteenth of an inch shorter and that's how I got two and six sixteenths now I hope that I have the measurements correct because I'm gonna confess that when it comes to these kinds of measurements I suck I really suck at it I've never really picked it up that well so I hope I'm doing this right I only know the the, the main ones I know the the half an inch the quarter of an inch and the main inch other than that, when it comes to six sixteenths and two and eighths of an inch and all that, I I get easily confused and I just I just go by the little sticks. So I basically say, oh, okay, it's three inches and I should do two little lines under that, <laughs> whatever that is, and that's how I do my math. So, but I really, for the sakes of this uh, tutorial, I tried to get the measurements correctly. So again, the rule of thumb is however wide your pages are you're just gonna make the binding a sixteenth of an inch shorter so this is two and six sixteenths by twelve all right and once you cut that out you're gonna score it and this is already pre-scored but basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up the long ways and you're gonna score it at every inch so at one inch, two inch, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, that's it, and that's your binding. Okay, so now that you have your binding, you're gonna start folding it, and this is gonna be a really simple accordion fold. Um, the way I start folding it is, if you look at the back of the mini album. I want to leave this little flap here open because this is what I'm going to use to attach the magnetic um, the magnets to and um, and this is what I'm going to use to pull it out 
So as you can see, this is folding down. I'm sorry if you hear noise, that's actually my pup. So anyway, going back to this. This is what you're gonna use to pull it out. So you start folding down. And that's what I did here, I already started doing it. So you fold down and you crease it with your bone folder and then you keep doing a simple mountain valley fold like any other accordion fold. So that's what I'm gonna keep doing here. All right, and this is what you end up with. Oops. That's it, nice and easy. So the next step is <clears throat> adhering your pages to the binding. So again, if you look at the one that's already made, I want to keep this little flap open. So I'm going to start adhering the pages on the second fold. Leave this one alone and start on the second fold. And then you're going to keep adhering them every other fold. So now here's another tip though. I'm going to start adhering because I have cut my pages out of the designer paper itself. Now, if you're using plain paper bags, you need to decorate these first before you adhere them, okay? Because then you're not gonna be able to get your paper all the way down because as you can see, this is, this is attached to the binding right here. So if you attach the paper bags before you put your designer paper, then you're not gonna be able to cover the back of your pages, all right? So make sure that you put your designer paper first, that you decorate your bags first before you adhere them to the binding. Uh, the measurements for for covering these, rule of thumb, you can either do an eighth of an inch smaller than what you're, what you're covering, you know? In other words, if this is, uh, I don't know what this is, two and seven eighths wide, you could do two and a half, or you could do a quarter of an inch less. It's really up to you how much of a border you wanna see. And the same this way. So if this is like, let's say three and a quarter inches high, um, you could either do three and one eighths or you could just go down to three it depends again how much border you want to see around the edges um, for my pages as you can see I have a very thin border going around so I only did it an eighth of an inch uh, sorry I would go down I would cut it an eight eighth of an inch smaller than the actual pages so that I could have about a sixteenth of an inch going around all right, and again, I hope I'm saying the measurements right, but <laughs> if not, I hope you guys out there understand me. All right, so we're gonna leave this flap alone because this is the flap that we're gonna use to pull it out, and we're gonna start adhering right here. So leave that alone, skip it, and start here. Then you're gonna leave this alone, and you're gonna adhere the second one here. Skip, adhere, skip, adhere, skip, adhere, skip, and the last page you go right right on top, all right? <clears throat> so let's get started here. And I use just basic wet glue, but I am gonna do something different with this now, so. Let me get this one done first. So I'll just put glue right there. And remember, these are about a sixteenth of an inch smaller than your base pages, so no need to go all the way to the ends because you might, you know, spill out a little bit. So just sort of stay within the main part. You don't need that much glue. It's just making sure your pages don't go anywhere. And then, since this is the back of your mini, then you want your pockets facing you, the front. This is going to be the front of your mini. So make sure that you don't adhere your pockets backwards. Did you adhere them this way, <laughs> all right? And that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna adhere them right to the binding, but right, make sure you don't go on top of the score line, because then you're gonna have trouble bending, all right? So you wanna be right on top of that score line. That's where you're adhering them to. And then, I always look towards the back to make sure that my binding is even, that I have the same amount of border on both sides, which should be just a smidge, a hair of a border on each side. And that's it. 
and just rub it down and make sure it sticks. Now, what did I mean by I'm going to do something different this time? Well, here it is. So I already got my first page adhered. I'm done there. So what I did for this mini is that I adhered the binding to the pages the same way I just did here. I completely closed it. But for this mini, I actually want to create a little pocket back here with the binding. All right. How am I going to do that? Well, the way that I want to create the binding is that I'm only going to put glue on the sides and on the bottom, leaving this open. And that way I can tuck little tags in here and little trinkets and bits and bobs in here. And I don't know. That's just what I want to do because it's a Halloween mini album. When it comes to Halloween, you have tons of little cute little embellishments you want to tuck everywhere. So I want more tuck spots. And that's basically what I'm doing. Do you have to do it that way? No, you don't. If you want to just adhere them all this way and just close them and don't create any other pockets, by all means, go ahead and do it. But that's what I'm going to do. And the way I'm going to do it, first of all, let me figure out the order that I want these in. So I put this in the back. This, just like that. I like it like this, okay. All right, so the way I'm gonna do that though, I'm gonna do that with score tape. Why score tape and not wet glue? Because the pocket is gonna be a really tiny little pocket, this basically measures an inch, if you remember when we scored the binding. Whatever I tuck in here, I don't want it flying out. And when you use score tape, to close your pockets, especially at the bottom, it still it creates a little sticky residue. So when you tuck something in there, it actually sticks to this a little bit. So when you have to pull it out, you have to tug it a little bit. It just won't fly out versus versus dry glue, uh, wet glue. Sorry, if you use wet glue, when it, once it completely dries, there's no sticky stickiness to it at all. Um, so I feel that if I use this, things might just fly out. I don't want anything flying out, so I'm gonna use. An eighth, this is an eighth of an inch, yeah. Eighth of an inch score tape. All right, so, and by the way, this is the first time I'm trying this little experiment of creating these little pockets, so let's hope it works. All right, so. Let's put this together. So I'm gonna put score tape. I'm gonna skip, skip that, and I'm gonna go to the next one, which is this one. And I'm gonna put my score tape right above the score line but not all the way to the end because remember there's a 16th inch difference between the pages and the binding so I'm gonna stop like right there you see that I didn't go all the way to the end I left that 16th of an inch that little smidge I left it open and then I'm just gonna go up that and like that and that's it okay let's take this off and let's say here this guy and I'm gonna use this one as my guide to make sure that this goes on straight so, let's see here. How am I going to do this? All right. I'm going to go like this. Oh, having a little bit of a trouble here. Oh, there it is. Got it. So I'm going to line it up to the one behind me. And there you go. I got it. Done. And there you go. So now I've adhered this page. Okay, so this one's glued, so this is closed. This one I used score tape. And now, if I have a little piece of scrap, guess what? I can tuck things in there. I love it. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna do that probably with every other pocket. I didn't want a pocket on every page, so I'm gonna do it in every other pocket. So, let me get going on this and keep putting the pages on my binding.
we're done. So now all the pages are adhered to your binding. And as you can see, you already have that cascading effect already when you pull it out. Okay, so that part is done. So now, what's next? The cover of the mini album. Here's the cover of the mini album. And I already have it cut it out. And for this mini, the cover measures two and three quarters by six and three quarters. And it was scored at one inch and two inches. So again, the cover measures two and three quarters by six and three quarters. And it was scored at one inch and two inches. Now, why those measurements? Here's my rule of thumb. However, widthwise, right, since this is two and a half, for the cover, I usually do a quarter of an inch bigger. So since this is two and a half, I went up to two and three quarters. So then you have about an eighth of an inch on either side. That's bigger than your base pages. And that's what you want. Usually your cover is a little bigger you know, wider and taller and higher than the inside of your booklet, right? So that's why I made it two and three quarters. Height-wise, these guys are about uh, four and a half inches tall. And again, the same concept. I want it to be about a quarter of an inch taller. So four and three quarters, all right? But since the cover is also going to be the spine, and it's also going to give you this little little lip right here, I had to account for that. And each one of these is an inch. So an inch here, an inch there. And that's where I did the math, right? So four and a th three quarters is how I want it as the base of the, of the cover because I want it to be a quarter of an inch higher than my base pages. Then add an inch, that brings you to five and three quarters, and then add another inch, and that brings you to six and three quarters. And that's how I came up with these measurements. And the reasons that I'm being so detailed about this is because, again, I want you to realize that you don't have to use these specific bags for this mini album. You can use any kind of bag that you have at your disposal. All you have to do is just adjust the measurements. It's either going to be a quarter of an inch more or a quarter of an inch less, or it's going to be an eighth of an inch more or an eighth of an inch less. It's whatever it's whatever you want or whatever you need based on what you're using for your pages all right so that's how i came up with this so this is already pre-scored so i'm gonna there you go oops there you go and this is the cover for the mini so the mini is going to sit right there and it's going to look like that. See, it's already coming together. Now, what do I need to do before I actually start gluing this down? Um, you have to adhere your magnets first. Now, again, this is for people that actually want to have that option of pulling this out and being able to just flip through it like a book. All right. You want to put magnets here. So I already have my magnets here. Well, I had a pair. Here's one pair. Where did my other pair do? I use two pairs. I don't just use one pair because I feel like I don't get enough of a grip with just one pair of magnets. And I might have to pause this video because I can't find my other pair. <laughs> I have no idea where it went. But, um... Where do they go? This is so frustrating. I have no idea where they went. I just had them here. All right, well, I'll be right back while I go look for my other pair of magnets. Okay, I'm back. And I found my, my uh, other set of uh, magnets. They were actually stuck to the back of this one. Because remember, there's magnets in here. <laughs> uh, TGIF. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah. So here's the base of my mini. And also this is the part where 
um, if you have any decorating or anything that you want to do to the the base of your mini this is the time to do it so I want to give my tags and the back of my mini the cover uh, this little the same scalloped edge or corners the same scalloped corners that I used on the beginnings uh, mini album so I'm gonna do that now with my corner chomper here using the scallop side so I'm gonna do it there here and while I was searching for my magnets that gave me a chance to prepare the um, the paper that I'm gonna use to cover my the back of my mini so I cut this out and I did it an eighth of an inch smaller from uh, the base of my uh, mini because I like I don't like uh, thick borders I actually like thin borders and that's my preference again if you want a bigger border to peek through then cut it a quarter of an inch smaller than the base uh, that you're matting okay I hope that that's clear <laughs> if not feel free to ask questions um, and just reach out to me so let me see this is gonna go I have to look at the design of these little bats they're so tiny and I am blind as a bat so I have to look at them real quick okay so I want it like this so I'm gonna these are the corners I want to chomp there you go and I like to distress on my edges so I just used a little mini distress inks black suit and I already went through all my edges but since I just chopped these two off I gotta fix that all right so we're ready all right how do we put these uh, magnets together so I have two sets of magnets let me see this is this goes on the side all right so there's one set and here's the other set so where you put them here, oh, and these are strong mag magnets because they're already following each other. <laughs> Let's just start with one at a time. So where you put them on the base of the mini here, this is where you're going to put them. Okay, not, not like this, fold it. All right, so it's going to go like that. It doesn't matter where you put them. You can eyeball them. So you could put one set here and the other set here like that. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do. And I'm going to keep them together with score tape. So let me get my score tape out. Something like that. I'm not being very picky about it. So let's put one set there. I didn't want this to be that long. There we go. Just ripped a piece of it, that's all. And let's put the other set about right there. So that's one side. Now to get the other side, um, what I usually like to do is I like to ink up these and I'm probably going to use something that I could see. I don't think it really matters because the cardstock is black so I'm going to use the black soot. And I'm going to ink these up. The magnets themselves, I'm just putting some ink on the magnets themselves. See that some ink on the magnets and then I'm gonna put these where I want it so I'm gonna hold it like this and I'm gonna center the back of where I want it my mini to go so this is gonna take a little bit of eyeballing making sure that and by the way you're gonna adhere your mini the base of your mini garbage 
excuse me while I clean this garbage out that just stuck here. Okay. You want the base of your mini to be right above this score line. All right. That's where we're at here in our mini. Right above it. Not on it because then you can't fold it, the, the spine. Right above it. So let's start doing this. So I'm sorry if my head gets in the way or shadows, but I'm trying to center this just right. And once I have it, I'm gonna push down, lift up, and I end up with, you see that? I end up with the ink there, so that's my guide. That's how I know where I should put the score tape for the other, and I have to do it quickly before they disappear <laughs> and dry out. But I can still see them. And that's where I'm gonna put my score tape for the other ones, the other magnets, okay, there you go. And now I'm gonna wipe the ink off here. I'm just gonna do that with my finger. Okay. Take off my score tape. Okay. And since these are positive to negative, you wanna keep them this way. So they're still stuck together. So you're gonna pick this one up Separate it from the bottom, like that. Flip it, and then you're gonna adhere it right here. There goes one. Same thing on the other side. Flip it. And there you go. And now your magnets are in place. And when you shut them down, they should line up. <laughs> All right, so at this point, you wanna start matting your, your back cover. So that's why I have this out. So this is the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna glue this right on top of this. So where's my glue? also have what's going to go over this uh, cut out which is this so this piece is going to go right over the magnets and I pre I'm pretty much using scraps from the same piece of paper that I'm using the that I use to cut out my my bags and that's pretty much what I'm using to cover down here and again this is about an eighth of an inch smaller from the from what I'm matting. So I just want a thin, thin border going around this. So let's put this on. ready to adhere the actual mini to the cover and really this is the easy part because you already have your magnets here so you're gonna put your magnets there <laughs> so it's already lined up for you and then all you're gonna do is put some glue here and glue it to your first page like that and just hold it until it dries a little bit and that's it you put your book together. So let's do that now. And 
just fold it over and put it right there. And you can open it up, and that's probably the best way to center it. And making sure you don't go over that score line. You don't want it too low, because then it's going to be on top of the score line. So, and then make sure it's even on both sides, which it is. And that it's not on top of that score line, which it's not. It should still close easily. If it's sticking up like that, that means you're too close to the score line. And that's it. Hold it closed. until it dries and here's your booklet there's your mini okay now comes the fun part decorating that's always my fun part and I'll go over the belly band soon but I already have my tags cut out these are the tags that are gonna go inside my mini I used the same scallop corner punch so to make them all the same and these guys are going to fit right inside each bag, like that. Look at that. So, I have to finish decorating the tags as well. I am not going to mat them. I'm going to leave them plain, just like I did with the other mini album. Because, again, I want these really to be for pictures. So, but I have to still, I'm going to do the same thing I did here, though. I'm going to punch a hole, and then I'm going to put some tulle of tool. I don't, we really don't know how to pronounce it. If somebody knows the right way to say that, let me know. I don't know if it's tall or tool. I say tall. Maybe it's tully. Been wrong this whole time. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to decorate that and then uh, um, add a couple of embellishments to the bags themselves. Um, and then I'll come back. Uh, see, I don't know if I should. You know what? Let me do the... Um, belly band closure now as well so that when I come back I'm just showing you the finished project so belly band which is what's gonna hold it together so you can actually display your mini album sitting up is already cut and it's over here and the measurements to this guy is let's see belly band was eight and a quarter by one and a quarter eight and a quarter by one and a quarter and I scored it at two and seven eighths, three and seven eighths, six and three quarters, and seven and three quarters. So again, it measures eight and a quarter by one and a quarter, and I scored it at two seven eighths, three seven eighths, six and three quarters, and seven and three quarters. Now why those measurements? Width, you can make it as wide as you want it. All right, I like mine to be an inch and a quarter, like that. All right. Usually because I like to embellish the belly band like I did with the other one. See, I added a little teddy bear and some flowers. This is how I decorated it for the other one. So I like to add stuff here. So I like it to be a little on the wider side. So that's why I made it an inch and a quarter. Then to wrap around it, right, I made it to be two and seven eighths, which if you take the back cover, all right, it's an eighth of an inch wider. So here we go again with playing with the measurements, right? Eighth and an inch, quarter of an inch. For the belly band though, I suggested it only be about an eighth of an inch wider because if you make it any wider, it'll just fall off all the time, right? So I made it an eighth of an inch wider. Then I scored it and I gave it an inch. I, I made the width the same width as the spine. I made it to be an inch sideways. So when you fill it with pictures, right, it should puff up a little bit. So you want room for your mini album to expand because you're going to embellish inside of it. You're going to be adding pictures. You're going to be adding tags or whatever. So the mini album is going to expand. So you want to give it room to expand. So I thought that an inch, which is the same size as the spine, would be sufficient. So on either, both sides, it's an inch. And then you have to account for the same width of the front. You have to account, do the math for the same width in the front. And then the other side would be another inch. And then I left a quarter of an inch. All right, this is a quarter of an inch, which is what you're gonna use to adhere the belly band together. So 
when you close it up, you put some glue here or some score tape, whatever you want to use, and you close it up, you're going to end up with your little belly band. Okay, that's how you make your belly band. I am not going to glue it now because I want to decorate it. That I advise that you decorate your belly band, meaning you put your decor, um, designer paper on first before you glue it. Because once you glue it, you know, you're going to have a hard time. I find it more difficult having to adhere all the little pieces on the sides and the front and everything when it's already closed. All right, and how do I adhere it? This little flap, I like to leave it underneath. Not on top, like that. I like to put it underneath. That's how I adhere my belly bands, okay? Do you have to use this as a belly band? No, you don't have to. You could just use plain ribbon. If you don't wanna make a belly band, you can use ribbon. Uh, you can use a rubber band. You can use, um, I don't know, what any other kind of closure that you want. You could even leave it without anything. I mean, if you don't want to really sit it up and you just want to leave your, your mini album laying down all the time, you don't need to close it. The only reason I close it is because if you stand it up and if there's nothing holding it, it just sort of flops like that. <laughs> and, and, and the way I made these, I designed them so that you can actually sit them up. So if you put the belly band on, see, they could stay standing up. Well, it's hard to tell in that angle, but they would be standing up and you can display it somewhere on a shelf or on a desk or whatever. All right, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna go finish this off, decorate it, embellish it, and then I'll come back and show you the finished product. Be right back. Okay, everybody, I'm back to show my finished project. So here it is. Oh, as you can see, it's, it's slightly bigger because I used uh, these different, uh, this die to make the pages, but I like it, it works. So here it is, here's my finished project all fully embellished all right and here's the back all right so let's go through it real quick so here's the belly band and this is how I decorated it I used a couple of embellishments and stuff from my own stash as well as sticker elements from the bewitched collection and here's the first page and here are the tags and as I said, I left the tags blank so that um, it's more for pictures than for journaling. And I open it up and here's my little pockets. I love it. I love the fact that I have another little tuck spot to put things in. So I have cut aparts from the, um, the collection. And by the way, all the papers that I used are from the six by six bundle pack. It works great for these sort of small little uh, projects. The six by six uh, paper pack works great. You have more than enough uh, elements and embellishments and paper to complete your project. And these are the other tags that I made. And on the back, um, I matted it with uh, ivory cardstock so that you can journal on it if you want, or you can even adhere really tiny pictures. It's really up to you. Here's the other bag. Here's the card. I used two different types of tulle. I used uh, black and orange, and I alternated them between the tags. Here's the other one. And there's my other little pocket. And in this pocket, I created a little mini booklet out of the cut aparts from the six by six paper pad. So for this, I used Let's see, here's the paper pad, and as you can see, I have a ton of paper left over. This one, this paper from the paper pack. I cut all these little little cards apart, and that's what I used to make these little tiny things. So this, I made a little booklet out of it. See? And here's the back. And here goes the next, the next page. And there's a tag. And the next page with the tag. And over here, I have two little things tucked into this pocket. I have this tag. And I have another little booklet that I made. How cute is this? I love these tiny little things. It's like the smaller the better, right? And here's my last page and a tag. And then if I want, 
I grab my little pull out and I have a cascading mini album that I can display. And there you have it. There's my finished project. Pretty quick and easy to make, simple. Doesn't take up too much paper or time. And you can store a decent amount of photos and journaling in these little mini albums. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a good night.